data cleaning. Data scientists spend about 80% of their time cleaning up and preparing data for analysis. They typically start with messy data and need to make sense of it all. It really is tough to predict exactly when they'll find an interesting insight to share, so it's difficult to apply standard project management principles in this field. I was curious, so I asked my network a question recently. With the innovation in the data space that we're witnessing, any thoughts on if you think data cleaning slash prep will take about 80% of the data scientist's time? 80% is basically what I've heard and researched um, is how long it usually takes, or I guess the amount of time that it usually takes a data scientist in order to clean and prepare their data. So here is what I heard back. We can start with Fabio. So Fabio says that the amount of time can be divided into two things. One, data cleaning being a specific problem for each data set. And two, the lack of tools for data cleaning. The first one is really hard to solve, but he's actually working into some deep learning algorithms to make this easier. The second one is that there are data cleaning libraries and frameworks, but none of them are kept up to date with the big data. So this is why he developed Optimus. The data cleaning in his company now takes much less time than before. Guillermo says, there are many tools for big data cleaning, but unfortunately they are not free. The other big problem is that the data is rarely cleaned in the central repositories or as the data is generated. So even if the data gets cleaned, the work is redone in big enterprises, which contributes to the famous 80%. He still hasn't seen a tool which really automates standardization, and experts say that if everyone helps with data quality, it would provide the best results. Jenpreet says that handling outliers and missing values is a crucial activity in the data cleaning process, which is very specific to the domain and the problem which we are solving. These require data exploration, which can be difficult to automate. Isaac. This component of data analysis cannot be and should not be abstracted. Model building requires having a conversation with the data. That only takes place during this 80%. When cleaning data, you find out where all the skeletons are buried. You uncover bases in collection, storage, and interpretation. Only then can you reasonably select and build a model. The most important innovations will come in project management and collaboration. Data science doesn't yet have its Scrum equivalent. Andrew, sometimes the data and the effort to clean the data depends on the data sources being used to perform analytics. With more sources becoming XML, JSON, and CSV formatted, we at least now have a format and maybe the column headings that we need. Unstructured text will always require a method to parse data on a case-by-case -case approach. Python and R can read data formats that are foreign to their environments, for example, SAS or SPSS, with the loading of data being solved as best as possible. The next step is to judge its appropriateness. You can look for outliers after you define the boundary of an outlier. You look for missing data that may need to be imputed with the same algorithm. Uh, an additional problem that occurs is when we only partially know a value, in which case we have a data censoring problem. For example, in an interrupt time series study, we have a before observation, but not an after observation. Another problem that Paul noticed is um, solving for data that includes, for example, measuring temperatures with a thermometer that goes only as far as 100 degrees, yet we have a degree that's 120 degree observation. So all we know is that it's at least 100 degrees. These are some of the issues that require human intervention, but maybe some can be automated to reduce the 80% time to clean data. Bruno, I heard once that one thing that could help in this whole process is having a well-defined data dictionary. If we have previous knowledge of the data set, it's likely that the time we're going to spend in cleaning the data becomes smaller. Maybe if companies start to mature this idea and start to define their own data dictionaries, our job can become a little bit simpler. Hold. Data prep is blending is becoming streamlined into repeatable processes with platforms such as Alteryx, allowing data scientists and analysts the ability to spend 80% of their time performing advanced analytics, predictive, spatial, statistical analytics, 
Uh, they can spend time in building models, analyzing outcomes, etc. Data scientists rarely work with one data source and the ability to easily connect to and join disparate data sources is becoming more crucial um, in the analytics process as the data volume grows. John, the one who solves this conundrum without losing business specific value in the process will be a very wealthy person. I agree with John. NP, EDA, future selection and the like generally must proceed heavier duty modeling, but the story seldom ends there. Given a problem or even modest complexity, prototype solutions seem to necessitate a cycle of passes between the cleanup and modeling, complicating matters. The two steps aren't finally de demarcated. Machine learning in practice de devolving into an exercise in hurdling many inscrutable black box algorithms as possible as a data set in the vain hope something will stick. Too much information likely would thicken the veil of ignorance. He thinks that the nitty gritty EDA can incrementally acquaint us with patterns transcending domains such as EDA often lies near the intersection of domain specialization and statistical generalization. We can rely on the rich toolbox of statistical inference after locating a few straightforward transformations into a more parametric setting. From there, point estimates, testable hypotheses, confidence regions, and the like will emerge easily. Anthony. While a more automated form of data cleaning would certainly be helpful and likely very, very valuable if monetized, too much automation can be detrimental. Oftentimes, a lot can be learned about a data set by getting your hands dirty during the cleaning process and any initial exploratory analysis. With complete automation, he fears that these insights could be lost, and conversely, depending on the specific application, complete automation could be just fine. Vin. For the last five years, businesses have been told that they need to capture and save data. It's the mindset of, it will be important someday. Format, quality, security, etc. weren't well thought out of these data warehouses and lakes, and most likely data dumps which require a lot of work to clean and prep. Businesses being aware that part of the data quality involves collecting data in such a way that it doesn't need much work to be useful will reduce the time spent on data wrangling. Automation should be able to drop to the level of effort even further. There is light at the end of this tunnel. Nick, there is a lot of understanding of businesses, the customers, and the product that the problem domains is bundled in that term of cleaning data. For instance, how do we reason about what an outlier looks like? We explore, we plot, we think, and then we clean. It would be hard to automate this process and we may lose sight and those aha moments that we may have. The predictive model of data product may suffer as a result. There's also the point that the great man Hadley Wickham made. Tidy data sets are all alike, but every mess of data set, messy data set is messy in its own way. Basically, each data set you examine requires skill and judgment to clean the data. With tools such as Tidyverse and Pandas, cleaning data is actually pretty fun. Nachiket. Data cleaning plays a crucial part in modeling. We have a lack of tools for data cleansing. If we are dealing with messy data, then automation doesn't know why those data parts are missing. In this crucial step, you will get to know your data, why those values exist, and why those values are missing. During this step, you will find relationships between the features, and this will help you a lot in feature engineering. Erica, this is exactly what Crowdflower solves for, for its customers collecting, cleaning, and labeling data at scale so data scientists and machine learning engineers can work on higher value tasks. Jose, it helps a lot to have a pre-built data mart for BI so you can prepare a script to transform the most used variables. As companies require more models, the use of pre-cleaned slash transformed variables is the way to go. Ravi, well, with versatile platforms and customized operation requirements, we'll continue to see a lot of garbage in raw data. But in the future, we'll see the integration of platforms where garbage cleaning will be done by the system itself. That would throw an innovation challenge to the data scientists. Matt. Data cleaning could be a real challenge, and it takes effort. The myth is that data science can simply be performed on any data set. This is false. 
garbage in, garbage out. We spend a lot of time working with clients so they can understand this. Once they get it, they tend to feel empowered because they see that data quality leads to success. Paul, the earlier you can engage with data during the collection process, the better potential for quality control. Of course, this is not always possible in every instance, but being able to check all the data coming in early gives you the confidence of your data and additional insights. Masiek. With the current speed of automation, soon most of the time will be spent on defining the target properly, with the remaining steps largely automated. And lastly, Kyle, I think that over the last year, uh, that 80% number has come down quite a lot. As more robust packages for data cleansing are published, that will come down even more. Right now, several teams are building in-house libraries for cleansing data, but not necessarily general solutions for everybody to leverage. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.